So part two of our unit six project, we have all our character dictionary set up. We have the print function set up and we also have the, um, you know, the, the game loop started, but we need to do a little bit of setup before we can really get the game loop working. So right now I'm going to define a couple of variables. One is the user command and that is going to be equal to nothing to begin with. Um, that's not what I want to do. And we're also going to say game status is equal to nothing, right? So those are the two that we're using to check. Uh, of course, we're going to have user command be taken in by the user. We're going to ask them what they want to do. Um, the other thing is one of the stipulations of the project is that we can only allow the user to ask a certain number of questions. So I'm simply setting up a variable right now. It's just the user question count and it's starting at zero. And I'll check that later to say if the user hasn't used all their questions, then allow them to continue, right? So here inside of the user uh, game loop, we're gonna say user command is um, equal to input. And we are going to ask the user, what would you like to do? Question mark, and matter of fact, uh, we're gonna give them a list of what they can do. So we can say acceptable commands are gonna be list, which will give them all the users, gender, um, age, height, and hair. And all these commands that they're, they're able to ask are basically going to give them um, the definition of the actual chosen character. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the print all characters that I have set up right here. And I'm also going to do two print commands that kind of just set up the project here. I'm gonna say, hello, welcome to our guessing game. a matter of fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy what I have over here on the left-hand side. Just two simple print commands. And there we go, we go ahead and paste. So that first print command just says, you know, welcome to our game. I've picked the name of a random person and you have to guess it. And the second print command says, the acceptable commands are list, gender, age, height, hair, or guest name. Um, and then you might want to detail out s some more for your own project, but I think this is sufficient for our examples. So down here, I ask the user, I say user command, what would you like to do, right? And that's just this very simple loop if we want to take this out. And if we were to save and run this, it's pretty simple. I mean, there's really nothing complicated to it, right? We ensure that our game loop works because I took in a command and it kept repeating. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. I'm gonna add a space right there just for the sake of the command. And now I actually need to write the logic of my game, right? We've got all the setup done, now what happens? Well, one of the first things that I wanna check is I wanna see if the user has already asked um, more than enough questions. So here, if the user count is less than two, I'm going to allow them to actually uh, ask their questions, right? So. Obviously need an if statement right here. All right, if they have less than two guesses, so they haven't gone beyond their two guesses, we can actually give them the opportunity to guess. So I'm going to say if user command is equal to, let's say gender, then I'm simply going to print out the game chosen character and I wanna print out the gender value. So if the user is uh, Brad, which is me, it's gonna go ahead and print out male. If it is, let's say, uh, Priscilla, it'll print out female, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go here, and I'm actually just gonna copy this. The, the next few commands are gonna be all very similar. So, so we have gender, I'm gonna do age, I'm going to do um, height, and I believe we can do hair as well, right? And these are just copy and paste. So here, I'm just gonna give the user what they want. Um, and for each of these, it's just gonna print out what they, what they asked for. So it's gonna get them closer. It's gonna give them clues to that final character. Um, the other thing we also wanna do though, is for every single time that they ask a question, we wanna say user question count plus equals one, plus equals one. And that's gonna allow us to check how many questions they've asked. And I'm gonna add that to every single one of our portions. 
Now, of course, if you're doing this on your own, uh, one thing I would challenge you to do is use this as a function because this is such a short game. I kind of chose to just do it as an if statement with all these different things, but a good function you could write is saying, you know, definition, take in what the user's asking for, and if it's just a simple detail and they just want that attribute, just give them the attribute, right? But here, I just have it listed out as separate if statements. So what else is the user allowed to ask for? They're allowed to ask um, to list. So here I'm gonna say user command is equal to list. And here we actually do have our command, right? So we're gonna print all characters and that's gonna be char list. So here it'll work just like it did before. It's just gonna print out whatever character they've been given. So that is what we have. Um, now, the other thing I'm gonna do real quick, so the user is allowed to guess and we're gonna set that if statement up. But the other thing that I wanna do as well is I want to set up an else statement. So if the user has um, already guessed too much, I'm going to say user guess and I'm going to force the user to guess. They've already given up all their you know question prompts. So I'm going to say, um, you run out of guesses, which character would you like to guess? Question mark. It's gonna take that in and I'm going to say if user guess um, is equal to game chosen character. And of course we wanna check the name of the given character. Here I'm going to set the game status is equal to over and I think I'm going just a little bit fast, but I think this is straightforward. I'm gonna say you chose correctly. Right, so this is pause for a second and check this logic. We're saying right here, if the user question count is less than two, we're gonna give them the opportunity to uh, see if they can get any of the information or if they can kind of start to get a little bit of information about the character so they can make an educated guess. If uh, they have, you know, two guesses already that they've already put in, then we're gonna go down here to this else statement and we're gonna say, okay, well, um, you've run out of the number of guesses. Uh, what's your guess, right? What's your final guess? Or you run out of questions, I think would be correct. And then we're gonna say, if the user guess is equal to the game chosen character, the game status I'm setting to over right here, right? That's going to um, enable me to quit the loop. And um, the opposite to that, of course, is elsewise, I want to do the same thing, right? The game status, we're not setting to win, we're just setting to over. So it's not concerned with winning or losing because we just tell them right here in the print statement that uh, you did not choose correctly. And that's pretty much it. So that's the final else statement right there for that second portion. This is the actual they have to guess but we also wanna be able to do that right here as well. So I'm gonna say, um, if the user command is equal to um, guess, and right down here, I can pretty much just take that same code. Of course, you could write that in a function, but for the sake of the video, and because it is such a short set of code, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that and paste that. So here, uh, I want to um, tab all this in so that it actually fits and it makes sense. It's formatted. We're saying if user guess equals this. And I believe the only other thing I wanna add here is an else statement. And I want to say that, oh, here's why that's highlighting. I need to set my user guess up right here as well. So I'm actually asking, the only other thing that I have to set up here is if the user is putting in an input that is not recognized. So if this if statement tree doesn't catch it, I just simply want to say print you, you did not enter a valid command. Please try again. And so now I wanna say we have pretty much everything set up. So I'm gonna go up here and um, I'm just gonna do a quick scan over my code, make sure it kind of checks. We have the if statement, checking the user question count. We are incrementing the user question count. We're setting the game status to over if they guess whether that is correct or not. We're letting them know if they guess correctly and the user is allowed to print out the characters. 
Uh, one thing I want to note here is that the printing out of characters doesn't actually increment anything for them. So it doesn't increment the user question count. They could continue listing uh, user characters as long as they want. So I'm going to go ahead and click save and I'm going to run. So it says, welcome to our guessing game. It gives us the acceptable commands here. I'm going to try list. You can say it's listing out everything that we have. So it tells me the different attributes in the names. Um, I just can't say you did not enter a valid command. But it should, it shouldn't run that, but we'll go ahead and ignore that just for now. So we would like to enter uh, list gender, age, height, and hair. I'm going to say gender, female. And it keeps running that invalid command uh, portion. We'll try to fix that in just a minute. But here I'm also going to say hair. So we can see it's a blonde female is the person. What would I like to do? Um, I'm gonna say hair again, but you can tell it says I've run out of questions. Which character would I like to guess? It doesn't give me the information, right? So here I am to the portion where I know that the user is Allison, and I believe that is capitalized. The name is capitalized, so I have to type in the username just like that. And it says I chose correctly, and we quit. Now, the only thing that I think we really have to fix with this code is to figure out why it is printing out my else statement down here. Um, I think that's just because it's not, this is kind of connected to the user command right here. I think the mistake is I need my else statements to be else if, right? So here, if I say else if, else if, else if, if it's recognizing this is an entire tree. So if we go ahead and run this, I'll say hair, and you can say it prints out nothing. Did I not put in hair correctly? So you can see it's giving me gender, and maybe this is someone who doesn't have hair. Oh, yep, nope. So everything is correct here. I was wondering why it wasn't printing out hair. Um, but one thing you can notice, we did correct the um, issue with, uh, it's still printing out something at the end, whether or not I got the uh, command correct. And that's because I had it as an if else statement rather than as else if statements. Now the difference here is that normally when you run these, right, um, if I had this like so, if I had this very last command as an if statement, this if else is being read as one block. Whereas these are being read as else if statements. Now, if I make this an else if like I had it, if I go back to the way it was, this whole block is being interpreted as one piece of logic, right? So it's saying, um, you know, go in, check that first command. If it doesn't read as that command, check that second command. And then this else is the condition that is falls outside of all of those. But it's not exactly just that last if statement. Because before it was just saying if the user command is not guessed, then run this. But now it's saying if the user command is not any of these, run the code. Um, but that is pretty much everything we've covered. Uh, we've got the user dictionaries working. We've got the actual game logic working. We've seen it. We've tested it. We even fixed a bug in my own code. So that is the final part of our Unix 6 project. Please comment below. Feel free to like and subscribe and comment if you found any issues, if there's anything else you'd like me to cover. Thank you all very much for your time.